Okay, in this video, we're going to be doing something really fun, and that is taking a look at our first real-life project. We're going to be deploying Mattermost. Mattermost is something that's similar to Slack or HipChat. It's basically a team communication application where you can have group chat, one-on-one -on -one chat, image, video, file, and document sharing. And the really nice thing about it is that it's open source and self-hosted. We're going to be deploying this as a single host web application with the web front end and the database back end on a single target host. But because of Ansible's roles, this is split into a multi-tier deployment with just a couple of variable changes. So here's what you'll be setting up when you're done. This is the logged in view of a tutorial Linux group, the different channels here, direct messages uh, and private groups available, and just a good old chat app. I really enjoy using Mattermost and actually recommend it for small teams and I use something very similar for a company that has 260 employees and it still works very well for day-to-day -day communication. So this is the finished product essentially which you'll be setting up. Without further ado, let's jump in. I've created some containers here. You can see Mattermost. To follow along with this lesson, you can just grab the setupmattermost.markdown cheat sheet in the cheat sheets directory. So what we'll do now is we'll just prepare all three hosts quickly and then jump into the rest of this lesson. So we're sitting here in the simple playbook examples directory and this is where our prepare Ansible target playbook is. Because of a bug in Ansible right now, some of the adding servers to uh, known hosts is not possible and we'll need to do that manually. So we'll actually just connect quickly to all three of these hosts before running the first playbook. So we'll say SSH Ubuntu here, type in yes, this is the part that we need. And we actually don't even need to log in, we just need to add that. Ubuntu add, and same thing again, and the same thing for the third one. By the time you see this, it's almost certain that this is not gonna be an issue anymore. This is a regression. I saw that this was a bug in an earlier version of Ansible and tusk tusk, it's come back, which means there was not adequate testing. It's totally normal for software though, so Ansible is certainly no different than other automation or configuration management software. It's a bit of a younger project, so this kind of thing can happen a little more frequently than I'd like, but I think it's still the most powerful option out there. I spend a lot of time with Chef, day-to-day, -day, and I've spent a lot of time with Puppet in the past, and I would still choose Ansible, even if it's being a little bit unstable in a minor version. In real life, you would simply stick with a stable version until you were ready to move on. But to keep this course up to date, I've just, I'm using the most current version, which is 2.2.0.0. So the next thing we've got to do is add our target hosts to an inventory. So I'm just going to vim inv, and I'm going to add my hosts here. 112.158. Go ahead and save that. And we are ready to run with this playbook. So here's the command we're going to run Ansible playbook, obviously, and then the playbook name. Then we've got the K or ask pass, ask SSH pass option. And then unfortunately, I've had to add ask sudo pass. This is the bug I was talking about before. Normally, uh, the K should be enough, and that, sh that same password should be used for sudo, but it's not tried for sudo in the current version. I've done some reading on this. This should be fixed soon. I'm passing it an inventory file, the one we just created. So that contains our three new hosts. So I'm entering the same Ubuntu password twice here because of this bug. If you're using a different version of Ansible, it's likely that you simply won't need to use this ask sudo pass flag, and you'll just need to enter a single SSH password. You can see here, this is the prepare Ansible target playbook. And one of the things I'm doing is just an apt-get update and upgrade. In production, I would obviously recommend always starting with up-to-date software on your machines, but this is gonna take a while. So what you can do for yourself is just comment this out temporarily. The other things we'll do here, are updating packages, installing Python 2 as before, setting our authorized key as before with just the user that runs the Ansible playbook, their IDRSA pub key. We're setting up some environment variables, just language and locale 
and then we're generating and reconfiguring locales. This is going to help us with a software install that requires those things to be set later. And through the magic of movies, we are done. So we've updated packages and upgraded packages on all these machines, installed Python 2, put our key into authorized keys, set up our environment, generated and reconfigured locales, and we're done. From here, we're going to change directory into our two playbooks to install Mattermost, install Mattermost directory. And this is the playbook directory for installing Mattermosts. You're going to edit the hosts here as well and include those same three hosts. In your case, it'll be either one or two hosts. In our case, this will just be one single host. 10.03.112. The first thing you'll do when you start looking at a playbook is check out the group vars all file. It's a good practice to write down what the playbook expects. For our case here, we expect one database server and one or more web servers. That's in the hosts file. We're using a single server, a deployment on a single machine, so we're fine there. The first thing we want to set is our domain. We're going to disable SSL mode for Mattermost. I've left a note here. Basically, if you're doing a single server install, we're not using SSL to connect to the database because it's all going to be on localhost, which leads us into localhost. Since we're doing a single server deployment, we're just going to run our database on localhost. If you were not doing this, then what you would do is uncomment the db server line above and this is going to go ahead and set your database server to be the first database server's ip address i'm not supporting read replicas or anything crazy here it's just expecting a single database server hence the warning above in the what this playbook expects so we're going to go ahead and leave this uncommented our postgres version is 9 Three. To check which Postgres version you're going to install, you could simply type in something like cache policy PostgreSQL. You can see that on my machine here, that would be 9.3. There are some other variables set here, but we can worry about those later. I can bump this because uh, Mattermost actually just released a new version. So this will automatically download that new version now. So that's pretty much all you need to know right now. We're just going to jump right in. Again, this will be a nice simple command, Ansible playbook, install Mattermosts, and then just the inventory file hosts. You'll be asked for your key for each login, so you'll have to type that in twice. And there it goes. Once this is done, we'll just read through what's been done, and then we'll verify that the application is actually working, and then we'll work our way through the playbook piece by piece. Okay, we're done here. Let's have a look at what just happened. So this is where we start the playbook, and the first play is our database setup. So we go ahead and enter that, connect to the first host. We're running the common role right now. On this host, we're installing a couple of pieces of software. Then we're running the database role and installing our packages that we need to run a database. We're creating an actual database and a database user to use for the application. Then we're cleaning up privileges a little bit for that user. And you can see that we're actually skipping two tasks here. This is allowing connections from external web servers, so not locally on this machine. And we are also not configuring this to listen on all IPs. Postgres is clever and ships with a secure default configuration. It's not listening for external connections and it's not listening on any IPs. If you were doing a multi-machine deployment, if you change those variables I talked about at the beginning, this would actually run and these, those things would be enabled because they're required for two machines to talk to each other. So that's the end of our database play and we go into the web server setup play. Here we see the basic package install again now, because this is not a split deployment, but on a single host, it actually checks twice because that common role is applied to both groups, web server and database hosts. This machine is playing both right now. But that's one of the ways you can see 
how this stuff is applied in a perfectly straightforward deterministic manner. No surprises. And that's what, one of the ways that it's so easy to split things up once you've got them divided into roles. You can say, sure, both of these roles will be played on a single server, or eh, each role gets its own machine. Once that's done, we add the Nginx personal package archive and install our Nginx web server software. We remove the default vhost that it ships with. We configure a new virtual host for Mattermost, our application. We make sure that Nginx is running and enable it. This is actually done by the package install, I believe. So it's already OK. Nothing had to change. We create a system user for our application. This is just a good practice. Then we actually go and download the application. So this is a tar gz file. We download it, unarchive it, rename the downloaded directory, do some application munging, renaming things, cleaning things up. We set up a config file for Mattermost, make sure our permissions are right, check whether we're using system D or upstart. You could expand this to check for like sys5 and 8 on another platform as well. We're skipping the systemd unit file creation because these containers are 1404 machines, which are still using upstart. If you're doing this on a web server out in the wild, it's likely that you're using a new enough distribution. They've probably already integrated systemd. So that's your init. In that case, this would run and this one would be skipped. But we're creating an upstart init file and then running the service and enabling that. So it'll start at boot now. Finally, we reload nginx and restart Mattermost, because config files have changed. Those are our handlers, right? Running deferred at the end.